So, hello and welcome to our live stream. <laughs> Hi, Clark. <laughs> Thank you hello. for joining us. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who have been following our live broadcasts, you will notice that today uh, we're going live or we've gone live now a little bit later than usual. But that's because we have the lovely people from GuardMe and they are in a totally different time zone. So today I'm very pleased to be joined by Clark who you would have met at one industry uh, event or the other, for sure, probably on the dance floor. And <laughs> it is the first time that I am personally meeting Christina, who is the person in charge of the Keep Me Safe program for Guard Me. And together with, um, with these two lovely people, we are going to be discussing, as you can imagine, the COVID situation in our industry, and more importantly, what is Guard Me doing in order to help uh, people and businesses in our industry. So I'm immediately immediately going to turn to you, Clark. Um, guard me, where is guard me at at the moment? And how has this situation affected you? Well, uh, it, let me begin by saying we're, uh, we're all surviving, we're all doing well. Uh, everybody on the Guard Me team is uh, healthy. No one's sick. Um, we continue to be in good spirits. Uh, we have 100 staff in our uh, Markham, Toronto location. Uh, they're all working from home. Uh, we had everybody working from home within a matter of a few days. Uh, everybody is uh, getting their work done. We're staying on top of things. So all of the work of Guard Me is continuing as per normal. Uh, of course, it's unusual because we're not seeing each other face to face. We're doing everything that we do. We're having all our team meetings and everything on, you know, some platform or another, Zoom or, you know, Microsoft Teams or or this one. This is my first time on a Facebook Live <laughs> uh, connection. So uh, there's we're always a first learning. time for everything. <laughs> yeah. We're certainly learning to use all the available technology. Um, as I was saying earlier, if from a uh, from a planning perspective, I think that we always knew that something like this would happen at some point or another. You know, our first uh, it's not the first time we've experienced this kind of of uh, of event. It's certainly the first time we've experienced it with the rest of the world all at once. Um, you know, we a few years ago there were many years ago there was SARS. And of course, SARS was not uh, across the whole world like it, like like COVID is. You know, SARS was regionally focused on a much more uh, in that way, and Toronto was one of those epicenters for SARS. And you know, we experienced about a forty percent uh, loss in clients, uh, clients that permanently closed their doors. Um, and we're worried about that, of course. Uh, we're not worried, you know, if this continues another year or, or longer, we as a company will be fine. We, we've done the planning. We've got the, the contingencies in place. We, we'll manage. What we're worried about is what will happen to the industry, um, mm -hmm. especially, <laughs> I think, the language industry. You know, the, the public sector will survive. They'll just up our taxes to pay, you know, and and it'll continue. What we're worried about is the is the private. I'll mute you in case you give anybody any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're worried about the private sector, you know, where where they have all these massive uh, fixed costs like rent and building and all of that. And there are no students. Um, and there's concern about how long they can survive uh, that particular scenario. Mm -hmm. And so we're mm -hmm. all struggling in different places in the world on, on how we reopen economies and how we balance that kind of need. As a company, we're looking at, okay, so this is happening. What do we do? And, you know, we're, we're sitting, we, we have an executive meeting every day at uh, four o'clock to talk about, you know, what's happened that day, what we need to do differently, how to support our employees or our students and our clients and our schools in different ways. And, 
And through all of that, we're repositioning a lot of things and we've brought in some new services and, and we're doing that all under the umbrella of Guard Me Cares. And mm -hmm. we're going to be relaunching that in the next few months and, and letting people know what we're doing and, and how we care. And, and you'll see as you introduce Christina um, that, you know, I'd like to sort of get her to say a few words about what we're doing one of the i'll just introduce it a bit one of the one of the <laughs> most challenging aspects of this whole thing is being alone being isolated yeah. you know i i have not seen my children since the 6th of march yeah. um you know they're only 50 kilometers away but they're not in in our bubble and and so it's it how do we manage that i'm lucky I am in isolation with my wife, and so I'm not completely alone. But Christina is living on her own. Okay. And yeah. So for her, all of this lockdown in a in her apartment and not being able to get out and not being able yeah. to see family, it's a yeah. tremendous impact on mental health. And it is. Yeah. That's sort of my kickoff to you, Christina, because <laughs> well, you can go. explain <laughs> what I'm alone and <laughs> yeah, what Guardme has been doing from a mental health perspective exactly. to really support yeah. staff, students, faculty, and friends of, of Guardme. And that's the thing, like, just as Clark has said, the, one of the changes not only is from the perspective of a business aspect of, of where things have changed and how things have really forced the industry to adjust to a new normal, but we've had to adjust to a new normal as well. We become very accustomed to certain routines and structure. And we sort of go through the monotony of our day without realizing that everything that we face, there's an aspect of uncertainty. However, what COVID has done for all of us across the world that has really challenged our, our mental wellness, has challenged our coping strategies, is has put the uncertainty flopped on our lap. It's unwelcomed. It was unexpected to the degree of how much impact it will cause in every aspect of our lives. So for some individuals, sort of work has been an escape from their home lives and vice versa. And now we've all been sort of thrown into, into one world um, and all of those worlds and expectations are colliding, which has really challenged people's ability to, to cope with all of this change and not necessarily see it from various perspectives in a more positive way. Yeah. yeah. In, so in one world that doesn't change. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the same. We went we go for a walk and just to jump in for a minute. We go for a walk. My wife and I go for a walk every morning. And we go to the end of our street and then back. And and okay. then the, the next day we go to the other end of the street. <laughs> and back. It's about a kilometer each way. Yeah. And okay. she said to me this morning, she said I feel like I'm in the Truman movie and I can only ever go <laughs> to the edge and then I have to turn around again. And turn around. But it is, it is a new reality that we're all, um, we're all living in. And it is also the reason, for, for, the, for the sake of the people watching us, it is also the reason why I wanted to have uh, somebody from Guardby, from the insurance aspect of Guardby, because I wanted somebody to talk about how it impacts the industry, okay. because we all know um, that that the tourism industry and international education has been hit really hard by all of this. But at the same time, apart from, I mean, people in our industry are business owners, people in our industry are people who have the responsibility of other human beings on their shoulders, of the jobs of other humans on their shoulders, and that continues to add to the stress. So that is why I also wanted to have somebody from the Keep Me Safe program, because that uh, I think taking care of our own personal mental health is extremely important in a time like this for me personally it has been uh walking as you're as you were saying clark walking running i mean i've never ran so much in my life i even joined a virtual challenge uh, where i'm planning to run 800 kilometers so can you imagine what covid has done to me <laughs> but i think we all and that is um, kind of to to 
tie in with what you were saying, Christina. I think we are all in our little bubble. Earlier on, before we went live, we were joking <laughs> about this. And we said, you know, that in Canada, apparently, you've coined a new verb and you have the verb to bubble. <laughs> Clark's, uh, who was it, Clark? Was it your sister who has one bubbled with? No, actually, uh, yeah. one of our, of course, Canada is a large country, right? Yeah. And what's happening in Vancouver is not the same as what's happening in Nova Scotia. They're thousands of miles apart. And uh, in Nova Scotia, they're opening up a little bit ahead of where we are here in Ontario in the middle of the country. And uh, uh, one of the things they've always been describing is household bubbles right? That household bubble is one unit. And as long as you do one unit things together, you're okay. In Nova Scotia, they've started saying, well, maybe two bubbles can go together. <laughs> and so this past weekend, our, our, our team member in uh, Nova Scotia, Megan Cameron said, uh, she was very excited when we were on the call on Monday morning. I'm very excited. I bubbled with my sister this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that is i mean and a new verb yeah it's a new verb but it is also to me i i think it is these are the, the little positives in in this huge sea of negative and how important is positivity christina from a mental it's, health perspective it's extremely important and it's really taking it again from a different perspective and what ends up happening is we have certain expectations that we sort of put into practice as to a situation or an experience. And when things don't happen the way that we expect, we get uncomfortable, we get distressed, our stress levels increase and all of these other changes happen. But it's really our perception that can dictate what our reality becomes. And again, because we became so accustomed to, to the old normal and the old way of doing things, mm -hmm. this has really challenged what our perceptions are. So when we're looking at reframing it, it's simply looking for the opportunities that can give you positive perspectives. Look at what this has presented you with regards to opportunities of personal growth, of shifting gears a little bit, of spending time with family, of loved ones. So when we are looking at providing people with the opportunity to learn these new perspectives, we've done it in different ways and, and trying to really establish that it's not only the industry as a whole that's being affected but as you said bernice each individual within it and we can't ignore the fact that some of these em employees and employers and owners are also going through their own challenges mm -hmm. so with the mental health webinars that we've actually been offering since this all began we really target the various different audiences and bring it back to the basics and let's reframe our situations let's build our coping mechanisms because the reality is change happens and if we become more proactive in developing sort of a toolbox of tricks uh tools techniques to deal with all the various stressors that we can experience we're better prepared for more change to come down the road and then in turn we're better able to support those that we need to in a positive way while still exactly. maintaining our own mental health Exam, that is also really important. It's extremely important. Mm -hmm. Also really important. So speaking of support, Clark, I'm going to jump back down to you. Uh, at the beginning, when you were introducing yourself, you spoke about some new services that GuardMe is going to launch, uh, the, the GuardMe Cares um, phrase that, that uh, you guys are promoting, we're going to start promoting very soon. How is GuardMe helping um, industry players at the moment? Well, it, it, simple things from, you know, helping create payment plans because we know cash flow has changed for a lot of our clients. And so it's a, a very easy thing that we can all manage together. Um, the mental health webinars that, that uh, Christina has been leading, and they've been focusing at, on some great topics. I like the one, uh, of course, not for me, as I mentioned that my kids have have uh, not been around the house for a long time, but but uh, there was one of them that we got terrific response on was the one on how to be a parent, a Call teacher. Call to triple duty. Triple duty. <laughs> Call to triple yeah. duty, being a parent, a, a teacher, and an employee oh, okay. all at mm -hmm. the same time. Of you course. know, we, we're really concerned about our own employees that have children still at home and still have to work. And how are they balancing that? And how can we help yeah. with that? And what can we do to support that? And that's part of what 
uh, Christine's Christina's workshop is about. Um, so there's that. We've also been looking at what kind of emergency services do we need to bring to the fore? Uh, because as horrible as this is, it's probably not the last time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you follow the literature and the science right now, um, not only are we going to have a second wave, but we may have a different virus altogether mm -hmm. that you know, looks at attacking different parts of the body. So this isn't done. It's not the last time it'll ever happen. Yeah. It may even happen more frequently. I mean, the last big one like this that they talk about often is the Spanish flu, which was, mm -hmm. you know, over a hundred years ago. I don't think it's going to be another hundred years before something like this happens again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what kind of emergency service and support do we have to have you know because as countries shut down around the world you know people were getting stranded they couldn't get out of italy you know they were stuck in lombardy when they yeah. couldn't come home you know how can we uh, create service and support that that actually helps somebody get out of that sort of situation and that's what we're creating we're be bringing up things related to that um it's also a, a much more dangerous world than it ever used to be. Mm -hmm. And what kind of things do we need to put in place to help with, you know, attacks that happen in certain areas, you know, mm -hmm. or a, uh, you know, unfortunately, shooting incidents are becoming more uh, prevalent all over the world, active shooter incidents. What kind of things do we need to put in place as an insurer? and as a you know kind of mental health framework that we want mm -hmm. to put in place for that so it's all kinds of things like that that we're looking <laughs> at and creating uh service and support to and we'll be bringing that out over the next few months and again it, it really brings it back to that idea of being proactive right and i think that when people are i feeling times of stress and uncomfortability it does create those mental blocks that so you can't problem solve, you can't strategize, you can't think ahead and plan. And that's just a cognitive thing. As humans, that's what happens. And it's part of that stress response that our, and those stress hormones that our body releases. So when we're looking at sort of that umbrella of guard me cares, that, that mental wellness piece does come in, in different models. You know, the one is the webinars, which is more of an educational mm -hmm. base type of platform and service where we give people information so they themselves can take away, learn, adapt, and, and just recalibrate their way of looking at things. Um, and then there's the Keep Me Safe program, uh, which is our student support mental wellness program. And that's something that we've had for several years now. Um, it's definitely been uh, redesigned, if you will, to, to really highlight the various components that staff, as well as the institution, do gain benefit from this particular program. It's 24 hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week support, regardless of where the student is in the world. And given our unique situation now, where a lot of our international students have started school remotely from their own home countries, that in itself adds its own stresses in addition to what they would have had as a student with different mm -hmm. expectations and things of that nature. So the Keep Me Safe program really leverages the fact that they can access it when they need it, wherever they need it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different modes of and efficient ways of accessing the, the counseling network that can provide them with that mental health support from a professional. Or alternatively, there's also those health self-help resources that they can access. So if they're more inclined to wanna read, and be provided tips on different categories that do impact their lives, there is resources for that. So it really looks at that whole umbrella of every aspect of a person's experience. So mm -hmm. from that physical piece and, ment and mental health piece, as well as possible unpredictable uh, down the road circumstances, Guard Me is really there and, and really pulling the line um, <laughs> to, to making change happen and just allowing any individual that we are able to support, feel that they're supported. Exactly. And speaking of that really support, uh, sorry, sorry, Clark, just one thing uh, to add on to, or to highlight perhaps uh, what, what Christina has said. Uh, we were talking before, and you mentioned a very important thing, that this kind of support is offered in the language of preference, 
yes. of the of the student, right? Okay, because yeah. I think it's very important for our schools, for our exactly. agents to, this, to know that it's not only offered in English. Just because GuardMe is a Canadian company doesn't mean that the support that it provides to the students who need um, exactly who need to use a safe program can only be in English. No, the reality is, again, whether it's a Canadian based or not, the, the fact is we are a very diverse type of country, mm -hmm. regardless of where you're at. There's going to be a variety of different cultures, a variety of different languages that people do speak. Even as a Canadian born, my first spoken language was Portuguese. Um, okay. And while I don't speak it now, um, <laughs> and I couldn't if I wanted to try. I won't ask you anything in Portuguese, don't, don't do worry. She <laughs> can still um, get mad in Portuguese. I can still get mad, of, co of course. <laughs> but I think that's the beauty of Mediterranean <laughs> languages. Right? Of, and there's certain phrases. Languages. <laughs> exactly. And there's also the aspect where, you know, when we are in, in a state of, of distress, whether it's, it's on the lower end of the spectrum or something that's feeling really intensified, we always resort back to our native tongue in order to express ourselves in a way that's free, and certain cultures and certain languages do have very specific phrases that indicate how that person's feeling without really having to go into a deep discussion as to, yeah. this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm reacting to. <laughs> so the fact that we're able to match um, a clinician with the student's preferred spoken language, there's also that cultural understanding from a North and Western way of doing things and providing a student tips that may be living in India may not be applicable to their cultural preferences and, and what their yeah. background is and, and sort of even what their values and beliefs are. So these counselors, not only do they speak their the language natively, but they also understand that cultural background piece. So when they are providing these students with the guidance, with the tips, and even just being that ear, the student yeah. is able to speak freely in the language that they are accustomed to speaking to. So they're getting the support that they're actually asking for. Um, mm -hmm. and being provided with efficient and adaptable tips that they can actually apply. And What's that really, is extremely helpful. Sorry, Clark, I stopped you earlier. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was going to say what's really exciting is, is the program has been available in North America for North American schools for about three to four years now. And, and okay. we, have, we have been supporting students who are coming in from all over the world to the schools across North America, but also supporting students going on study abroad mm -hmm. from these institutions to all over the world. But it was always sort of based in North America. What's really neat is we are now launching in England, in the UK and, and in Ireland. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Now we're ready to launch. So sco schools in those locations will be able to implement it on their campuses as well for mm -hmm. students coming in and students going out on exactly. study abroad programs. So that's going to be based exciting. On that, based on that, Clark, if there are any, any schools in the UK and Ireland watching us who would like to receive further information about this, what, what should they do? Who, um, who should they contact? So I'll well, they can the certainly... They can certainly reach out to me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to guard me. They can go on to our guard me website and and follow the link to the sales email. They can go on the guard me website and look for Nicoletta Pinto or mm -hmm. Mark Sheeran and connect with mm -hmm. them. They'll be managing the sales in the UK. And uh, and if they contact me, I'll be putting them in touch with Nicoletta or Mark anyway, depending okay. on where they okay. are. Very well, very well. Okay, that's great. So big things ahead for the company, big, you know, big, big steps forward. And it seems to be, uh, it seems to me that this Keep Me Safe program keeps growing and, grow and growing and growing. Uh, I remember when it all started, when, when you guys launched it a few years ago. Um, and it was quite new in the, you know, as at least in our industry, it was quite new, but it has really grown. So what are perhaps, what are the future plans for the Keep Me Safe program, Christina? Well, I think right now it's again, just really recalibrating where things are going and, and the various aspects of support that we're able to give our students um, and able to give the staff and, and um, just even the leaders within the industry. Uh, the mental health webinars that we're doing now is something that we're doing remotely, obviously, given 
the current uh, precautions that we all need to limit contact. Uh, but those and will also free. and free exactly. And we waived all costs in order to again provide anyone and everyone this ability to access support, even if it's informational. Uh, when we're looking at um, customizing various webinars, even for various industries and, and, and different schools, different countries, uh, they mm -hmm. will be in English. And though it's just a matter of where we're at right now, let's just build the strength and resiliency um, of the overall population to help better manage where they're at right now and build that strength and positivity to move forward. And then we'll see where we need to go from there. But we're always looking forward. Um, it's always about growth. And I think even from a personal perspective, that's a helping uh, perspective shift is always look for the opportunity that will provide you that personal growth yeah. uh, because that will help shine the sunshine on some of these darker moments that we mm -hmm. sort of sit there and go, oh my goodness, okay, I'm stuck in my apartment again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But yes, Very welcome to my apartment. One thousand <laughs> of lockdown. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, another, I, think I was just going to say, another thing to keep in mind is that these things are always dynamic. You know, when we started the program four years ago, we thought we would, one of the challenges, of course, facing a lot of institutions even four years ago was the demand for counseling and support services from on-campus resources. And those resources weren't allowed to, uh, weren't able rather to, to keep up with demand. And so we developed this program with the idea that we would actually help institutions deal with the demand for counseling and sports services and deal with their lineup, as we called it, exactly. right? The lineup mm -hmm. at the door. What we found as we did the program and expanded the program is that we were actually bringing people into mental health supports who would not have normally gone. So mm -hmm. in some ways, we weren't even dealing with the line. We were, we were dealing with people who were afraid to get in the line. Mm -hmm. And that's really been quite remarkable. And, and that's what I mean by dynamic. And so as we learned that we were actually focusing or you know there was that kind of interest in people who weren't even going to get into the line we changed what we were saying and how we were doing things so that we would be more uh, accessible and uh, and people would feel less stigma in using our services yeah. because that yeah. was, was stopping them from using other services uh, yeah. on the campus and so that's what i mean by dynamic it'll keep changing and and as covid came of course we needed to change again and mm -hmm, exactly. you know, something will happen in and exactly and we'll need to change again so exactly. it's that's mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and it's just it's just really maintaining you know that adaptability and flexibility right yeah. things are unpredictable and whether it be business or whether it even be mental health and our reaction to certain situations it doesn't it, there's always that unpredictability because of uncertainty we don't control everything so yeah. when we are looking at what we're able to do right now, it's about what we're able to do right now and not being rigid in that way, but being um, really embracing the possibility of other scenarios to come and knowing that there's that possibility for growth. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. One, of the, one of the interesting things in all of this that I often uh, share with people is that um, some of the reaction that we're having is because we feel like this is really uncertain and it's an amazing uncertain time and oh my god <laughs> how do we know what's going to happen next well guess what we never know what's going to happen <laughs> we don't well we okay don't. So, you know no matter yeah. how wonderful and regular mm -hmm. the world is we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. next and so if exactly. we can get comfortable with that <laughs> Well, we're already in a better spot. Exactly. exactly. So funny enough that it's a good segue, actually, because yesterday when I, I hosted a webinar on um, developing and maintaining healthy coping strategies during uncomfortable times. Okay. So again, not uncertain times. It's uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Because yeah, yeah. It's unwelcome. Right. And yeah. one of the things I talked about was regardless of what the stressor is, there is a recipe for stress, regardless. And there's an acronym that actually helps to identify what the ingredients of that recipe is. And it's actually called nuts. What is it called? So, nuts. Nuts. N-U-T-S. 
Uh -huh. so the N is about novelty. So when something is new and you've never experienced it before, that raises mm -hmm. your stress level. The U is for unpredictability. So when you don't think right, um, the T is about threat to the ego. So when you're, you feel that the, your confidence of a person is called to, you know, question that raises stress levels. So in situations with students where there's evaluations, um, even employees with regards to feedback, right? That's fits in there. And then the S is with regards to sense of control. So again, mm. we can't control everything. We can only control ourselves. Yeah. So those ingredients help us <laughs> identify what stress is. And if we think about COVID-19, well, it kind of meets all of them. And though so does traffic, yeah. so yeah. does job loss, exactly. so exactly. does groceries, fees being increased. All mm -hmm. of these things are th things that we naturally exactly. experience but yet we've implemented various strategies to help alleviate some of that stress yeah. so, so traffic it's always there and you know at a certain point of the day when you have to go from point a to point b it's going to be a busy time yeah. a lot of people are traveling so you make accommodations to lessen your stress you leave earlier um maybe you pour yourself a bigger cup of coffee whatever the case is, the mug. she promised us right? she wouldn't show us the mug <laughs> Oh, I had to though. It was unpredictable there. <laughs> it was unpredictable. How did you how did you deal with that? Perfectly. But again, it just speaks <laughs> with various strategies that we do utilize as a proactive measure for something that we know is going to happen. But yet you don't know how much traffic it's going to be. You don't know yeah. if there's going to be a, an God forbid, an accident that happens that slows you down even more. So when you follow that ingredient, it sort of helps alleviate some of that stress, but also allows you to really build that coping strategy toolbox and yeah. build the inventory because not all strategies are going to work for every situation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very, very sage advice. Guys, we have come to the end of the time we had allotted for this. Um, but before we go, I would, before we go back into our bubbles and before we start, <laughs> bubbling again um, i love this verb i'm really going to start using it um, i would just like you to send perhaps one small positive message to the people in the industry the people watching us about moving forward about you know post covid let's let's think positive let's think ahead what's your message to the industry clark perhaps i'll start with you wow um I think the the message that I would want to give people is to, you know, um, uh, well, this is a good one. Stay positive, mm -hmm. test negative. <laughs> <laughs> having, sa like that. having said that, um, <laughs> you know, humor, <laughs> humor, love, forgiveness, and and excitement and wonder. If you bring that into every day, um, we'll all be in a better position to deal with what's coming. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, I think there are going to be going to be second waves, maybe even third waves. And as long as we continue to support each other, continue to be innovative, continue to be, uh, you know, gentle and forgiving, and and uh, responsible for our neighbors, um, we'll all survive this quite quite well. And and some businesses may not because they were too thin or or it's the the lockdown's been too long but the industry will survive people will always want to study abroad they'll always want to go learn another language um we'll just have to be creative in how we create those opportunities exactly okay thank you thank you for that clark christina one last message from you oh I think really I'm just going to keep it short and that's really just to take a deep breath and choose to embrace a new perspective. Yeah. Very well. Well, guys, thank you very much for being here. It was indeed a lot of fun. It was just like a regular catch up. So <laughs> I hope that people watching us have enjoyed this. And you know what? I'm going to end it with Clark's words again. Stay positive and test negative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.